blossoming in marriage. Today, specifically, I want to zero in on something, how to be marriage material. <laughs> you know, when someone is good enough to be a husband, they say the person is a husband material. <laughs> when someone is good enough to be a wife, we say that the person is a wife material. So today, we're speaking to all of us, right? How to be a marriage material. Hmm. Proverbs 18.22, New Living Translation. Proverbs 18.22. The man who finds a wife finds a treasure and he receives favor from the Lord. I believe also that the woman that finds a husband finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. I prophesy miracles of supernatural connection. And it begins now in the name of Jesus Christ. Every demonic interference in the fulfillment of marriage, especially connection, to the point of wedding, I declare in Jesus' name, such intervention is destroyed. Such interference is destroyed. The cycle of failure is broken. In the mighty name of Jesus, I prophesy manifestation. Every form of delay is canceled. And I speak to the dream and the desire of your heart and I prophesy it into manifestation. Yes, that wedding day that you've seen, that picture, uh, what you've prepared for, because some of us have really prepared, I prophesy it into manifestation in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. How to be <laughs> a marriage material. And just in case you think this is just for singles, it's not. So for the married, you can title it, How to Remain a Marriage Material. Of course. <laughs> Why? You know, obviously, somewhere along the line, we, somebody doesn't see another person as marriage material anymore. That's why we pack it up. So it's not only becoming the marriage material for singles, how to remain a marriage material. First Samuel 16, 7, New Living Translation. Let's start from somewhere. Mm -hmm. First Samuel 16, verse 7, New Living Translation. <laughs> You know, I could title this, How to Be an Attractive Person. <laughs> First Samuel 16, 7. But the Lord said to Samuel, Don't judge by his appearance or height, for I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Whoa. Okay, so generally speaking, when it comes to this issue of deciding who to marry, the idea here is don't start from the outside, okay? Good. So, but we're talking to the person, right? We're speaking to each of us right now how to be <laughs> marriage material or how to remain one. So since God spoke to Samuel then for Samuel 16 and separated between inner beauty and outward beauty, I'll just take it in those two simple strips. Now, this is such a broad subject that there's no way we can exhaust it today. So, you're going to have to do some research and study yourself, but at least I can get us started, right? Good. So, this is my first piece of advice. Develop inner beauty. Develop inner beauty. Okay, 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 okay. So, if I know somebody will be thinking, that's it. These pastors have come again. Oh, outward beauty doesn't matter, right? Outward is just, just anybody that God says, whether the person is attractive or not. Mm, that's not what I'm saying. Okay? Physical beauty is important. Mm -hmm. You remember what God said there? <laughs> For man looks on the outward, but God looks at the inner part of the heart. Now, except it's an angel that you want to marry. Mm? <laughs> Man, if it's a human being, they look on the outward. So the physical beauty is important, right? We're not arguing about that. 
We're just talking about the priority. How, which one do you prioritize? Yes, yes. Let me ask you, help you to say it. For the person that is saying, ah, <laughs> you pastors marry some of the most beautiful women in the church. Well, I'm guilty as charged, right? Yes, she's a beauty, right? <laughs> I have good eyes. So, <clears throat> yes, yeah, so that my auntie asked me the first time, I went with Pastor Nika to see my family. <laughs> when my aunt saw her, <laughs> she said, she asked me later, how did you see her? You that, you don't even lift your eyes to look at somebody else face to face. How did you see such a beautiful woman? I said, auntie, you've forgotten. I'm a pastor now, okay? I'm a pastor now. I tell people to lift up their hands, close their eyes, and worship the Lord. I said, and while they're doing that, I watch and pray. <laughs> of course, just a joke. Oh. <laughs> I'll tell you what I believe. Everyone is beautiful. Everyone is beautiful and handsome, honestly. <sighs> Once you begin to see someone as ugly, I'm telling you, it is inner ugliness that dampens the external one. So let's start from there. If you're going to be someone that people find attractive, attractive enough to even think of marriage, you've got to develop your inner beauty. Be spiritually attractive. In 1 Peter chapter 3, Verses 3 and 4, New Living Translation. First Peter 3, 3 and 4. He says, Don't be concerned about the outward beauty of fancy hairstyles, expensive jewelry, or beautiful clothes. You should clothe yourselves instead with the beauty that comes from within, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is so precious to God. Wow. Be a person of value. Be a valuable person. And your real value is not in, in, in the external part of you. This physical body that you carry around is about two-thirds water in terms of composition. And then the other chemicals, just some small grams here and there, right? Your real value is in your intangible part. So there's the real thing that makes people to be attracted to you it's not only external. The external one can fade, right? And it does fade <laughs> with time. But that inner one, that's where the power is. Peter was recorded to be a married disciple of Christ. Remember that there was a day that Christ went to Peter's house and Peter's mother-in-law was sick with a fever and Christ healed her. So Peter was married. And this married disciple of Christ is the one that is advising that is advising, don't focus on the external too much to the detriment of the internal. Focus on the internal beauty first. What does a beautiful person look like? A, a spiritually beautiful person. It means that you're a loving person, a caring person, an empathetic person. Because God is love, right? You want to be beautiful, be a loving person. Be a caring person, right? And you ask, okay, so how can I become a loving and caring person? I'll tell you, your shortcut is to be filled with the Spirit of God. Every human is born with Satan's nature. And that nature is a nature of wickedness, right? So be filled with the Spirit of God. Be submitted to the Spirit of God. Let the Spirit of God motivate your words and your actions. That's it. And I'll tell you that the first thing the Holy Spirit will do is to pour the love of God into your own heart. And God's love will heal you of past trauma. Nobody came from a perfect family. I promise you that. <laughs> right? Nobody was born perfect. So the likelihood is we've experienced some form of trauma, some form of disappointment, some form of frustration before. 
your heart, when his spirit fills you, fills you with his love, he sucks out the pain. He heals you of the pain. You know, there's this old story uh, of something that happened in the U.S. when people were moving from the eastern part of the U.S. to the west coast because there was a gold rush. And they said this group of people were coming to a particular city as they got to the west, and they met an old man at the gate of the city. So they were considering whether they should stay in the city or not. So they approached the old man, you know, introduced themselves, and the old man said, wow, welcome, where did you come from? They said it, then they said, well, uh, we're thinking of staying in this city. He said, fantastic. So they asked the old man, so what do people look like in this city? Are they friendly, are they nice? The old man asked them back, where you are coming from? How were they like? Were they nice people? Were they loving? Were they caring? Or were they wicked? And the first set of people said, oh, no, 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 no. Where we are coming from? Wicked people. Very wicked people. Terrible people, you know. The old man said, hmm, you know what? The people here are exactly the same way. They said, oh, wow. If that's the point, we better continue. We said, yeah, good luck. So they continued their journey. Another group of people came. They greeted, and then it was the same conversation. They were interested in staying. And they asked the old man, what are people here like? The old man asked them, where you are coming from? Where are the, what are the people there like? Oh, they said they were very loving, very caring. We actually missed them. We, 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 we really didn't want to leave them. The old man said the people here are exactly the same. And they decided to stay there. Isn't that amazing? The old man gave the two groups exactly the same answer. Whatever you think the people are, where you are coming from, that's exactly how people are here, teaching a lesson. The likelihood is that your past experiences with people is what you will project on the people that you meet in the future, right? Or the people that you meet now. And that's why that healing process is so important. When the Spirit of God pours His love into your heart, He sucks out the pain. You may still have the scars, but you don't have the pain. Joseph still had the scars, but he did not have the pain. He had totally forgiven his brothers. If he did not, that pain, that hatred would either prevent him from getting to the position God provided for him, or it would cause him to sabotage it. We need to experience healing. Amen. The shortcut to you becoming a loving person is for you to be filled with the Spirit of God. In Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23, New Living Translation, the Bible talks about what, what we call the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit. So when the Spirit of God is inside you, is the one that influences your thinking, influences your emotions. Okay, before you react to people, you remember Holy Spirit is inside you. You ask Him what to do. You obey Him. This is what will come out of you. Galatians 5, 22 to 23. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. What? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Oh my God. Who wouldn't want to be around that kind of a person that produces this kind of fruits? You see what I'm saying? So the starting point to developing inner beauty is for you to be a loving person, genuinely loving and caring person. So I had something that follows on that. Don't be critical of others. Don't be someone that criticizes other people, always finding fault with them or with what they do. I promise you, nobody enjoys being criticized. And when it's a recurring feature, don't be surprised that people are going to move away from you. Right? Good. Matthew 7, verses 1 to 5, New Living Translation. Christ spoke about it. Uh, <clears throat> no, this is Message Bible now. Let me read from Message Bible. Matthew 7, 1 to 5. Don't pick on people, jump on their failures, criticize their faults. Unless, of course, you want the same treatment. That critical spirit has a way of boomeranging. It's easy to see a smudge on your neighbor's face and be oblivious to the ugly snare on your own. Do you have the nerve to say, let me wash your face for you when your own face is distorted by contempt? It's this whole traveling roadshow mentality all over again. Playing a holier-than-thou 
part, instead of just leaving your part, wipe that ugly snare off your own face. And you might be fit to offer a washcloth to your neighbor. Oh, wow. Don't pick on other people jumping on their failures. Wow. <laughs> no one likes to be around someone that is running them down all the time, jumping on their mistakes. Nobody, I promise you, nobody likes to be around people that run them down all the same. You know, because when you're around a person like that, you have to be in defensive position all the time, <laughs> right? Ready to defend yourself. No, we don't build relationships like that. And, and so what am I saying here? This is not only for people who are trusting to find somebody to marry. I'm saying even for those of us that are married, that it is possible to have been very nice at the point at which we got married. But when you experience marriage, marriage life, eh? <laughs> when you experience marriage life, it's amazing. Look, don't even underestimate it. You see, in this time when you go through our counseling classes, marriage preparatory classes, we confront you with reality. There's no point pretending and deceiving people. Two people who grew up with two different families, two di from two different family cultures, coming to live in the same house, you need time for adjustment. Please. Mm? These uh, one year, two years, oh, we're not doing it again. Please slow down. Except if somebody pulls a knife on you, run for your life, okay? But other than that, <laughs> the, you ask anyone who is married, like the first five years, they'll tell you, what is it? Ah, from two different families? I like this. No, I don't like that. That's where it starts from, right? <sighs> and then before you know it, someone is insulting somebody's family and that campaign, right? There's no need, right? Good. All of these have to do with self-esteem issues, right? That's why we're talking about developing the inner beauty, right? Seeing yourself the way God sees you, putting value on yourself, then you can put value on other people, right? The one thing I know is this. When someone makes a habit of running other people down, that's exactly how they run themselves down internally. And that's why all of us should not be in the business of running one another down, right? So let me add this, which is important, compliment others. If you want to be a nice person that is attractive to people, you've got to learn to compliment others. Now, when, when you are okay inside, you won't have a problem complimenting other people, right? You look good. Wow, I like your hair. Well, every single time that you meet someone, compliment something about them. You will be amazed how you will attract people, like hmm? bees attracted to honey, <laughs> right? Compliment others. Praise other people. Praise has value. Be humble. You know, uh, Philippians 2, 3, and 4, Paul says, consider others to be better than yourself. That's when you'll be in the position to compliment, to focus on, on people and their positive attributes. There's absolutely nobody who does not have weaknesses. But I promise you, when you're the one who jumps on people's weaknesses, people move away from you, right? Why don't we compliment our strengths? And then with time, we can help support people in the areas of their weaknesses. Generally, hmm? be a generous person. Generally, right? Yeah. I don't want to brag, right? I don't want to brag. <laughs> but while we were cutting, eh? there was one weekend, Pastor and I needed to go to Ibado, right? And I had a car, right? And she could drive, right? You know what I did? I told her to take the car. You know, I told her to drive the car. We were still preparing, you know, towards marriage. I told her to drive the car. And I went with commercial transportation to Ibadan. What was I trying to communicate to her? I will take care of you, right? <laughs> I will prioritize you. This is what I think you are what? This is what I think your value is. Of course, so if you can't manage your ego yet, we're not even married yet, you should know exactly what to expect when we're married. Right? A lot of the things that people experience after marriage, the, the signs had been showing before we got married, right? Exactly. So I'm just saying, again, remember how to remain married, that doing ego contest in marriage will destroy marriage, right? Remember, humility is a proof of wisdom. Okay, 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 okay. Before I go, develop the outward beauty too. I said this is a, this is a very broad subject and we can't <laughs> exhaust it today. Eh? Look good. 
Remember, <laughs> God looks on the inward. Man looks on the outward. If it is no angel you are going to marry, you need to look good. Amen. Are we all agreed on that? Exactly. Groom properly. Ah. Mm. Maybe this will also help. Be actively serving somewhere, right? Using your gift. Charisma matters, right? Charisma is gift. And all of us have gifts. So you find out, like in the church, people that serve in the choir, you know, when they use their voices, you know, or, or people see them because, you know, they're serving. I promise you, when you're charismatic, because that's what it means, right? That you're using your gift, you know? And because it's a gift, it makes you look beautiful. When, you are, when you're operating the talent, you're doing something with ease that others do and don't get the same results. Am I right? Music is a gift. It's not the professor of music that puts music in you, right? Sorry, Dr. Shii Kenny. <laughs> A music director, right? We cultivate what is there, right? It's the same, and every single person is gifted. And in our world, you just have people who will be salivating, looking at other people and wishing they were like them, and they will neglect their own gifts and talents, right? Good. So it doesn't matter whether you're introverted or you're extroverted, whether you're this personality or that personality. I'm just saying, if you would... Take your mind off yourself and focus on adding value to other people. Be a value-adding person. The likelihood that you will be attractive to other people is very high. Right? Fantastic. If you are married already, eh, please don't let things go down in that compartment. Right? Don't let this go. Continue to look good, right? <laughs> and now you have only one customer now, right? <laughs> Knock the person out, okay? Husband or wife, right? Look good. Groom properly. Amen. Oh, finally, finally. <laughs> have the fear of God. Because I read Proverbs 31 verse 30. And it says, New Living Translation, Proverbs 31, 30, Charm is deceptive and beauty does not last, but the woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. The fear of God. My prayer point, when I was praying for someone to marry, I said, Lord, yes, I need the person to be, the person needs to be beautiful and attractive, yes, the person needs to be this and that. But one thing, Lord, I want to take God for your person. I want someone you can talk to. That was my interpretation of it. Somebody that you can talk to because I, you can't control another human being. But if I can pray to you and you can give the person instruction and the person fears you enough to obey, we'll be fine, right? Okay, so I'm not talking about the person. I'm talking about you as a person, being a God-fearing person. Are you a God-fearing person? <laughs> or if you are married, are you still a God-fearing person? That's important, right? <clears throat> I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that the glory of God will be seen upon you. But Adam, Adam and Eve realized that, oh, um, they were naked. What was that? It was just the beauty of God, the glory of God that was taken away from them. Remember, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that the glory of God will be seen upon you. The beauty of God will cover you. When people see you, they will not see you, they will see God. I pray that the way people will respond to God is the way they will respond to you. I pray in Jesus' name that people of value will not run away from you, they will move towards you. I pray for miracles of connection in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for the birthing of marital destinies in the name of Jesus. I pray for the restoration of beauty and peace and joy into homes in the name of Jesus Christ. Hmm. I prophesy in Jesus' name. That situation that has seemed complicated, one word from God will resolve it. One word of wisdom from God will resolve it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
I pray in Jesus' name, if anyone anywhere out of hurt or pain pronounced something on you that would disrupt the fulfillment of your marital destiny, I stand under God's authority through the blood of Christ and I cancel it. In the name of Jesus Christ, I call you blessed, empowered by God to prosper and to flourish in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Someone receives physical healing now in Jesus' name. That palpitation of the heart stops in the name of Jesus. We receive physical healing. If you're trusting God for physical healing right now, will you go ahead and thank God for it? In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. Christ took this pain on the cross and I receive my healing now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Can I say a quick prayer for that person who says, Pastor, my relationship with God is not okay. Can you pray with me that God should forgive me my sins? If you're that honest person, can you please put your hand on your heart and let me pray with you. God bless 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 you. My relationship with God is not okay. <laughs> My relationship with God is not okay. I, I need the glory of God. I need the beauty of God on my life. Can you say this prayer after me? Can you put your hand on your heart, wherever you may be, home, in church? Can you put your hand on your heart and say this prayer after me? Dear God, I believe that Jesus paid for my sins. I ask you to forgive me and to accept me as your child. Thank you for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, thank you for everyone that said this prayer. And Jesus said there is joy in heaven among the angels. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because you are throwing a party in heaven right now. Their sins are forgiven. The nature of sin is removed from them. Your own nature is put inside them now. We pray, Heavenly Father, teach them to know you personally. Teach them to love you and to love other people the rest of their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Someone say a good amen. Let's give Jesus a big hand clap and thank him for these wonderful people. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. All right. So while we were praying, our officials gave you a card if you are present at any of our physical locations. Help us to fill it with accurate information right away. We have very useful information we're going to send to you. Don't underestimate it. It's very important. Okay? And then when we're done, just leave the card on your seat. We'll pick it up as soon as you leave the seat or you may hand it over to one of our officials. If you're part of the service online, there's a link in the chat room right now. There's also a QR code on the screen. Give us your information. We'll send what we have to you via email. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.